Welcome back. Larger than life radio and television personality Jeremy Mansfield has died at the age of 59. He was battling stage four liver cancer. His close friend and former colleague Samantha Cowan confirmed his death this morning. Mansfield announced earlier this year that he had been diagnosed with cancer. Well, the tributes have been pouring in. Mansfield was well loved and well known for the very big breakfast show, The Rude Awakening, on 94.7. He later worked at Hot FM before announcing he would take a sabbatical in 2021 last year. At the time of his death, he was hosting the YouTube show Mansfield Today. Let's hear from another radio legend and broadcaster, David O'Sullivan. Uh, David, we appreciate your time today. Our condolences uh, to you because you were, you were good friends. You, you were mates. Is this a very sad day for you? It's sad, Francis, in that uh, a, a big man has passed away. I, I think I've got used to the fact that he was ill. Uh, it still comes as a bit of a, a hammer blow. But I saw him last week, and he was at pains to stress out, to, to stress then, that nobody should be sad. Those, we never discussed his impending death, but it was interesting that he just made that little observation. Nobody must be sad. So I've chosen today just to remember the good times. And as you say, I've known him for a very long time. We were at university together. Um, we were in our early 20s. I was his journalism tutor. We were the same age, but he had done national service. So he'd come to university a few years after I did. And I, he won't be um, in any way insulted. He wouldn't have been insulted if I said he was a terrible student. He was not an academic, <laughs> but he was an actor. He was studying speech and drama and journalism, and he thrived on being an actor, and he did incredibly well. And I think it was that acting ability, being a trained actor, that set him apart, which is why he was such, such a successful broadcaster on radio and on television. He hosted a number of TV shows, and he adapted to that medium so easily because standing up in front of a crowd, whether it was virtual or real, was something he was trained to do and something he thrived upon. Also, as you said, larger than life, he had so many mates. He enjoyed a good time. He lived life to the full. So, so I remember him on air saying that he had been a yabbermouth um, his whole life. He had been called out for that at school and everybody wrote him off. But, but look at his career because of it, uh, because he could speak so much. Uh, what was it? What was it like? What was he like off the mic uh, when it was just you and him um, having a beer, chatting? What was he like? He, he could be quite introspective, but I must say he was somebody who didn't turn it on just for the cameras and didn't just turn it on for, for the microphone. Uh, what you saw is what you got. Off air, on air, he was much the same kind of person. He loved to push the boundaries. He liked to see how far he could push you, needle you. And that was no different on air, uh, where he was testing the boundaries of freedom of speech. You recall the height of his fame came just in the early days of democracy, where suddenly the media had these newfound freedoms. Previously, freedom of expression, even in common law, was, was really quite tightly restricted. You had to be very careful about what you said, otherwise you'd open yourself up to successful claims for defamation. Then things started to change in the country. New freedoms came about, and Jeremy was one of those who wanted to see how far he could go. He was forever being hauled before the Broadcasting Complaints Commission, and more often than not, he would win because freedom of speech would trump whatever complaint was laid against him. And he loved to do that. He was mischievous. He was cheeky. He, he called his show The Rude Awakening because it was just that. It was rude, and he was unapologetically rude. But if he insulted, if he offended, if he caused any kind of harm to people, he was very quick, if he felt he had done something wrong, to apologize. He wasn't above that. But people who should have a thicker skin would be the target for his attack. And he was unapologetic in, in having a go at those who should be able to bear it. He was controversial for that reason. And that's what makes a good broadcaster. And by pushing the boundaries, um, you do help the people who come after you. You, you test those boundaries, and, and I'm sure that was appreciated. Uh, David, when somebody as big as him comes along, um, he, he changed radio. That's what Lloyd Madurai said today. Uh, he changed the, the, the platform. For you, how, how did he do that? Uh, what would you say is his, his legacy? 
Well, it was because he brought these acting skills to, to bear. So he would create a lot of characters. And because uh, and, and he would make these characters come to life. I think very few people realized that all these people who would talk back to him on the radio was in fact him. It was just a, a, a quite good, clever production that was done. And he would interview himself doing these voices, doing these characters. But he was clever in the kinds of things he was doing. It was parody, it was satire, where we hadn't had that before. And he also surrounded himself with very good people who could bounce off him, and he could bounce off as well. Uh, it's called a zoo format. It had been done before, but he did it most successfully. But then, Francis, the other thing he did incredibly well is he understood the power of radio for the greater social good. And so he got himself involved in a lot of upliftment programs. When he was, in fact, diagnosed with cancer for the first time, leukemia, he threw his weight behind leukemia sufferers and, the, um, and, and assisting leukemia sufferers. Every year at the end of the year, he did these enormous drives to uh, assist those on the mar in the marginalized communities, those less well off. He, he used radio as a powerful force for good because he understood the power of radio. Did he understand um, how big he was? This, this was arguably the, the biggest uh, breakfast show at, at the time. I don't know the exact figures, but the, the numbers were going up. And he had a great team, but, but he was the anchor of that. Um, did he understand? Did he wear that fame well? Yeah, yeah, he certainly understood that. And um, he, he would not miss out on any opportunity to remind me of that. I was doing the afternoon on 702. He would ask me often, just as a giant, how big is your audience? What, are you, what have you got at the moment? <laughs> he, he, he would track the audience numbers. He would check, track the revenue numbers. He would look at his audience numbers for his TV shows. But he wasn't doing it to, to stroke his own ego. He wanted to make sure that if he was getting this enormous reach, that he was using the medium properly and effectively. That was his main goal. But of course, amongst radio people, we all like to be competitive. He'd use it to have a go. And I, <laughs> I, 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 I always lost. <laughs> all right. Well, you did say that he, he used that fame well uh, for good causes. Thank you so much for paying tribute tonight. Uh, that was David O'Sullivan paying tribute to Jeremy Mansfield.